Hello, everyone. I'm going to be talking to you about work and energy today. And for my students, that's found in chapter seven of your textbook. Work is an interesting concept. Work is force exerted over a distance. And you can only do work if the object moves. So if you're applying a force and then nothing moves, then you haven't done any work. And so let's just get into utilizing this idea and defining it. And I don't think you need to look at me the whole time, so say goodbye. All right, but I'm still here. So work. There we go. Equal to F D cosine theta. Where this is the magnitude of the vector F. And this is the magnitude of the displacement. And then this right here, theta, is the angle, oops, angle between the vectors F and D. So if you look right here, F and D are scalars. Those are just the magnitudes. So those are not going to be negative, and that can be tricky, especially if one or the other of them is pointing to the left, you might be tempted to put a negative sign on one of them. But don't, there's no need to. What you're going to do is just put the magnitudes here and then put the angle in there, and that'll take care of any signs that we need. Okay. And let's consider a situation where, let's say there's a child sitting here, on a sled. The sled's being pulled by someone here. Okay, so we can draw a free body diagram for the sled and child as a system. So there would be weight and there would be a tension from the rope and a normal force. And then there would be some friction, some kinetic friction. All right, so you're familiar with drawing free body diagrams. But now, can we draw a work diagram? And a work diagram is useful because it really helps us get this angle right. And if you look at the first few problems in the packet, you can go through those. Uh, the solutions are posted in modules under Canvas. All right, so let's think about a, a work diagram. Well, each force is gonna have its own work diagram. So we're gonna, we're gonna draw four of them, or at least we could draw four of them. See how much space we have. So the first thing is we draw the force vector, draw it just like it is, and then we draw the displacement vector. We can see that this sled is being pulled to the right. So this sled, oops going to the right, that's D, and then there's some angle between them. I didn't actually define it up here, but whatever angle that is, it's the same angle down there, and that might be 25 degrees or something like that. So that is a work diagram. And then let's say that frictional force. The friction is acting to the left, the displacement is to the right, and the angle between them 180 degrees. Now you may rec recognize that the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. So that's gonna take care of a negative sign there. You can also do a work diagram for the normal force. And we see that there's a 90 degree angle there and cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And so that means the normal force is not gonna do any work. And so we have two kinds of forces that we need to worry about. The first are conservative forces. And for physics, one, the course you're in right now, there's the force of gravity. Yeah, so 
force forces force of gravity and the spring force. Okay, those are the only conservative forces that you need to know about. And then non-conservative, which I'll just abbreviate, is all other forces in this course. Okay, now we can talk about the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is a, a simple concept that says all the energy in the universe is conserved or the energy in the universe is constant. There's no energy created or destroyed. And so the initial energy we could say is all of these and then the final energy is all of these. Now we're only considering a few types of energy right now uh, rather than all the different kinds. But we're, so, we're, so we're narrowing our view, but initial energy equals final energy. That's what the law of conservation of energy says. And that is true for the universe, as far as anyone can tell. It's never been disproven. But we can't analyze the entire universe at once. And so what we're going to do is analyze a system. So we define a system, and then we say, OK, well, the initial energy of the system is equal to the final energy of the system. But quite often, energy goes into or out of the system. And so we account for that with this other term, which is listed right there, which is the work done by non-conservative forces. So the initial energy plus the work by non-conservative forces equals the final energy. And this work can be a positive number, which means that energy goes into the system. Okay, so if we had 10 joules and then the work was positive five joules, then the final energy would be 15 joules. Whereas Let's say the work was zero, it'd be 10 plus zero equals 10. Energy is conserved in that case. Um, the work could also be negative, which means energy leaves the system. Okay, so if we had 10 joules of energy and then there was negative five joules of work done, then the final energy would be five joules. All right, let's just look at each of these types of energy real quick. There is gravitational potential energy. And that is defined as MGH. So the, the heavier something is, the larger the force of gravity and the higher it is, the greater the amount of gravitational potential energy. And then there is spring potential energy and that is equal to one half k delta x squared. And we'll learn more about this later, but k is a measure of how stiff the spring is and delta x is how far the spring is stretched or compressed. And then there is kinetic, oops, sorry about that, kinetic energy. which is equal to one half mv squared. The faster something is moving, the more energy it has and the more mass it has, the, the more kinetic energy it has. And so that gives you a basic overview of work and energy. And also we talked about conservative and non-conservative forces and the law of conservation of energy equation with that work term to account for any energy that goes into or out of the system. And up next, we'll look at um, using this law of conservation of energy equation in an example.